everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Tiffany Benson, one part of Team Benson, and today I have a, a ton of stuff going on in my garden right now that I need to pick because it is mill planning for the week. I'm also going to try the hose water <laughs> from the new water filter that we have. So let's get today started. Now guys, I have been seeing a difference um, just from like salt like deposits from the water. So that is nice that I think that the water filter is starting to work, but I do want to try it. So I got a glass here and it was sitting on the ground so there's just like wood chips on the bottom. That's garden life. But look at how clear it is, guys. This is very, very clear than what it normally is. So I wanted to try it to see what it tastes like. And it actually tastes pretty good um, it doesn't have a smell to it or anything like that which before my water kind of had like this weird kind of smell to it but it's a lot clearer it's not cloudy and it actually tastes pretty clean like almost like it's not hose water <laughs> so I want to show you guys what the filter looks like so this is the filter sorry for all the shadows guys but it just attaches to uh, this little hose and then there's the filter and then it attaches to my main hose so i thought that that was pretty easy to attach and i don't know we'll see how it continues to go throughout the summer all right guys so normally i'm out here first thing in the morning to harvest vegetables but i got out here way too late <laughs> so a lot of things need some water my garden needs some water right now and one of the things i like about harvesting things first thing in the morning is because everything is nice and plump and it's full of the water that it the plant naturally like needs in order to be happy so uh, that's one of the benefits of harvesting first thing in the morning but you can harvest at night it's just not as like I don't know full full of water and flavor I guess but one of the things I'm really excited about harvesting, guys, are the tomatoes. I'm going to go close up, but you guys, I have some red tomatoes. And I have some tomatoes that are, they pro now, I'm going to let them stay on the vine longer in the future, so the next round. But this round, I have a couple of birds that are really interested in these tomatoes. And this is going to be like my old gardener's wise tell. Now this has no scientific proof to it. It has like nobody else has said it other than me. But this is just kind of what I've experienced in my garden. That when I have birds that are interested in my tomato plants. If I take the first round of tomatoes a little bit early and let those ripen on the countertop then it makes the birds kind of go away. It's like they're scouting out in the beginning and if they get that first taste of tomatoes, then it's like they never go away. They always are like beating me to it. So the first round off of a tomato plant that I get just in my garden, the first, the first one, whichever tomato plant gives me a red tomato first, I pick it a little bit early and I let those ones ripen on the countertop. So that's just my old gardener's wise tell. Like I said, there's no scientific proof to it. It's just me saying that. All right guys, so it's these ones over here that I'm going to get. So I'm gonna get these three, but I'm gonna let the rest of them kind of continue to ripen on the vine. But those three are coming in because if not, I swear those birds, they're going to taste it and then they're going to realize that it's a tomato plant and I'm going to be fighting them for the rest of the season. All right, so I swear it was a good thing that I went out, came out here and got these because they actually started to split a little bit. Now, why would your tomatoes split? Usually uneven watering. I have not watered my garden in two days because I've been really, really busy with work. So, uh, and it's been really warm. So that will cause some splitting. And it didn't split until I kind of pulled on it. So that's how you know. But I'm gonna go ahead and try it. Make sure I'm not getting bugs. This is so good. Guys, there is nothing like the very first tomato of the year. That one's not even completely ripened yet and it has the most intense tomato flavor ever. If you guys have never grown homegrown tomatoes, that should be something you have in your 
in your just garden. I'm actually going to go ahead and just eat the rest of these. They're not going to have a chance to ripen and or make it in the house. So let's see what else we can cook. Alright guys, now that we are zero for one for meal planning, because those tomatoes were delicious and I ate all three, I am going to pick these broccoli heads. Now as you can see, the broccoli heads are trying to kind of flower up. That's because my broccoli is a lot later than what I should have put it in because I had an issue with rodents eating them. So my broccoli matured a little bit later than what I, it normally does. But that's fine because I'm still going to get a lot of little sprouts like this once I pull the heads off of the broccoli. It'll start giving me little offshoots. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull these. We're going to have another probably a broccoli bake or a stir fry. And then um, we're just going to wait for the little side shoots to come in. All right, guys. So you know how you, they say don't grocery shop while you're hungry? Don't harvest vegetables while you're hungry either. Because you'll end up eating all of them. And then you'll have nothing to cook. But this broccoli is so amazing. It's so good. No, do not harvest when you're hungry. It's a bad idea. But look at how much broccoli I have, guys. So now my heads of broccoli didn't get super, super huge. Because one, they were growing late. So the weather is kind of warm now. So it was trying to make them flower. And two, let me finish this broccoli in my mouth. All right. I'm back to being a normal adult. <laughs> but one, so one, the broccoli, it was growing later than what I wanted it to because I had the problems with the rodents eating them and then two the sun is a lot warmer right now so it's going to cause the broccoli to flower a lot quicker than what it would and also I have more broccoli plants in here than I have in the past now one that's because I just had extra broccoli plants because I kept starting them because they were getting eaten and then I just threw them all in here and then the problem got solved and then also I wanted to see how many I could grow in this space because we love broccoli and broccoli does amazing right here. If you guys watch any of my videos from last year, I pulled broccoli florets off literally for I want to say like two or three months going in. Like I was going into May, I want to say pulling out broccoli florets. So. I wanted to see how I could maximize that and one of the best ways of doing that is just growing it and see what happens. So uh, I now know that a three on each side would probably be a good, um, kind of like a safe amount of broccoli to have and will still give me bigger heads. But even when you don't get super big heads, as you guys can see, just by taking off all of the heads off the top, that's a lot of broccoli. And on top of that, I'm going to get a ton of little side shoots after that. So we're going to be in broccoli for a while now, which is amazing because it's one of my favorite times of year. So next up are radishes. I have radishes here and then I have radishes in my medicinal herb bed too as well. So it's time to get these things pulled. Let's kind of see what it looks like. Look at that guys. That is a nice size radish. One of my favorite things to have is radishes and green beans. So I have some green beans canned and I am going to chop up these radishes and saute them all together. Guys, have you ever seen something so perfect in this big pile of radishes? I am pretty excited about this. Now a lot of people don't know that you can eat radish leaves. Now I'm not the type of person that says, ooh, let me add some radish leaves to my salad. That's just not me. But what I am going to do with these is I'm going to dehydrate these and add them to my green powder. So this is how I get a big jar of green powder after the season in a small space garden. Because every single leaf that I can, I dry it and add it to that and I just continue to add it to the jar. So then when I don't have green leafy things in my garden, I can always take a little bit of green powder and add it to pasta sauces, add it to just different types of dishes and it adds that nutrients to our meals and nobody can really taste it so just a whole bunch of different leaves. Alright guys, don't judge me, but back to that no gardening when you're hungry thing. Granite, I, oh my god, that is so sweet. This is so amazing. Best day ever. I only had like one snow pea, so why wouldn't you just eat it while you're there? No judgment. No judgment. Alright, so moving on down the row, I have all of my rat tail radishes. 
Now, I've been trying them out at different stages to see when's going to be the best to pull them. And I found that you don't want them to get too, too big. So when I can really, really start feeling the seeds, that's a little bit too big. And they come out a little bit chewy when you start cooking them. But they make a perfect addition to my stir fry. So these are something that are going to be a staple in my garden. Because one, they're beautiful and they're very unique. And two, they just taste really great. It's like a sweet radish with like a little bit of a spice at the end. And that flavor still carries on even when you add different sauces to it. I just have to work out the perfect time to pick them. But I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pick a lot of these and I'm just not gonna use the tips because that's when the, the tips are a little bit woody. But, and the next time I'm just gonna pick them a little bit early. Now one thing I want to suggest is to uh, plant these kind of the way that I did, which I did it by happy accident where I planted them like pretty much like a week to two weeks apart. And I'm glad I did that because once these things start flowering and they start going, you'll get this many like every single time you come out to pull them. And this is only off of one plant, guys. Like that's a lot. So uh, plant them just kind of, don't plant, go out and plant like a whole uh, row of them and think like, okay, I'm just gonna get like a few every now and then because once they're ready, they're ready. So you wanna pick them because otherwise they'll get woody. So. That's just a tip. So this sun is finally not so harsh in my garden. So this should have been the time that I should have came out, but I had to go and charge the phone for a minute because it was dying. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna pick some peppers and then I'm gonna get some parsley. And I think that's all I'm gonna get because my garden really needs some water. I haven't been out here for two days and I think I'm gonna water it before picking any other green leafy things. And we'll do that maybe tomorrow. So I have a lot of shishito treats. Now one of the things I went through when I started doing with my peppers is picking the best pepper because this shishito plant didn't get as big as these shishito plants, which it should have. And it didn't because there was like three other plants in here. So I went through and I cut two of the plants out and I'm letting this one grow. So right when I cut those out, it produced a couple of shishito peppers, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab those, and then I'm gonna fertilize this one and kind of let it kind of catch up with life. Guys, so every time I think, okay, I'm just gonna go grab a couple of shishito peppers, it doesn't look like there's that many, I find these monster shishito peppers all in these plants. Now, if you guys remember, I had taken all the shishito peppers off this plant, and I had meant to prune it. I was going to prune it, and I was gonna kind of let it prune and fertilize it and give it some more compost and because it had a couple afibs on it. Well, once I got all the shishito peppers off, I rinsed off all the afibs. Apparently they went away and it started flowering all over again and producing more shishito peppers. Now I'm not mad at it, but this thing has been producing for months now. So once again, if you need a pepper plant, shishito peppers are where it's at. You'll have enough to last a lifetime <laughs> off of and it's still going. Like it's just starting to bloom all over again. Guys, this basket is looking so beautiful. And look at all those shishito peppers. Looks like we're gonna have shishitos on the menu again this week because we have a ton. So the last thing I'm gonna get is some parsley because it is crazy and wild. And then I'm gonna go inside and make some steak. So I have tons of parsley throughout my garden, which ADD moment, guys, look. That one's starting to turn red. But back to parsley. I have tons of parsley in my garden. This is the one that's by my jalapeno pepper plant. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of little baby jalapenos over there. Now this one grows wild and I like this one. This one is the flat, um, flat broccoli or not broccoli, flat parsley. And I like this one for making steaks with. If you guys have never had a steak in a cast iron, you are missing out. The one thing you want to do is you want to take your steak and salt and pepper it. In the meantime, while you're letting your steak sit with salt and pepper on it, you're going to take a uh, cast iron skillet, put a little bit, well probably like a half a stick of butter and a little bit of olive oil. And then you're going to take parsley and I'm also going to grab a sprig of rosemary up there and you're going to let it kind of saute in the bottom of the pan. Once it sautés to where it's wilted, then you're gonna add the steak on top of it, sear the steak on both sides, and then put it in the oven and let it finish cooking and it'll be the best thing you've ever had.
Look at this, guys. I cut back the massive parsley plant, and look at what I find. A giant jalapeno. So that is going to be on the menu for some time this week. I've got to figure out what to make with it. Now one thing you guys will notice is that there's like some sun skull on my leaves. That isn't like the plant being sick, this plant over here. This is just sun skull. So this is part of that salt water like from my garden. Um, my garden hose kind of getting on those and then the sun just burning it because it went from like okay weather to like pretty warm weather and for some reason that plant got it. And it also has some hell damage too as well. So I'm just going to prune off some of those leaves in a little bit here and then just let it continue to grow because the plant's completely fine, still healthy. And if you get close to it, you see that there's nothing really going on like spot wise on the leaves and it's still having a bunch of new growth. All right guys, so I think that this is enough to get me going this week to kind of put some things together. So I still have a couple of green, um, like bok choys and some lettuce and I would, actually I should have saved those tomatoes so I could have had my own garden tomatoes for Taco Tuesday, but we live, we learn, we eat them because they're amazing. So I'll, once those ones ripen up, then I'll bring those inside too for Taco Tuesday. But I'm gonna go ahead, take these inside to get them all rinsed off and washed off. I'm gonna lay everything out on the countertop so we can do like a montage video of the garden harvest at the end. But until next time, grow yourselves a garden because even a small space can provide you with tons of food. All right, bye guys.